Hello guys, I am Shane Davis, 20-year comic book veteran. I'm here with you again, once again with the beautiful, charming, lovely Yanzi Lin. Welcome back. Hello everyone. Thanks for the well wishes. I think I can talk now. I think, maybe. Hmm. And uh, today we are talking about some comic pros, some careful tweets they're putting out at a time when the industry is sinking. And we're going to talk, why are they doing this now? But before we get into it, please look down below. Let today be the day you hit like, subscribe, ring the bell for notification as we do talk about comic books and such. We got a guy over here you guys might know, Tim Seeley. I'm letting you know at Artist Alley, New York Comic Con 2023. Let's talk about it. All right. So Tim has a series of tweets that we want to point out. This one was, this one was dated last Friday. He says, Think about how stupid of a business model the variant cover game is. Publisher spends $20,000 on the interior of an issue no one reads to get collectors to buy a cover the company spent $800 on. So it can be sold on eBay for $400, mounted between two sheets of thick plastic. Yeah, the variant cover game is something that people have been talking about a lot lately. Especially when you think about things like Eternals. Was it what? Having 40-something variant covers? You had to qualify right. for a whole bunch of them too. So basically, like one if a variant is one out of 25, that means you have to buy 25 copies of the base comic to be able to buy one copy of that variant cover. And there have been some crazy variant ratios too. We know that, for example, Keanu Reese Berserker, that was a one to 1,000 variant. So it is a pretty crazy game that publishers have been playing. It's a crazy game. Um, and, and we're at a point where the game of musical chairs is almost up and people are going to start pointing fingers and blaming one another as uh, everybody loses. And uh, this is an old argument. And for people who know, variant covers kind of really kicked in and kicked up back in the 90s, kind of took a dip after the market crashed and rebounded, and then they came back. But they kind of stayed steady uh, at a time. Like the variant cover game works really well when um, the interiors of comics are actually art driven too. There is an argument here. Uh, if you're Marvel Comics, you could hire J. Scott Campbell to draw a 20 page comic and sell it one time, or you could have 20 J. Scott Campbell covers and each book, each cover sell for the same cover price as the individual J. Scott Campbell comic. Now, that is the problem with the variant cover. It will take an artist and dilute, basically, or spread out thin and, and just chase a collector's market. Tim's right, I hate to say here, it is an issue in the American comic book industry and one that I've known many publishers to actually dread. They actually don't like it. But the problem is, is single issues aren't that collectible anymore. And uh, there's not a lot of talent going into the interiors. Now, you could blame Marvel and DC, or you could blame the fact that main interiors, whether it's writing or artwork, is being hired off of diversity quotas right now. So you got to sell that stuff somehow. And again, that leans onto the collector's market of chasing certain artists, whether it be Art Germ, J. Scott Campbell, whoever, Jim Lee, variant covers. So let's look at Tim's tweet that came out today. Comics got an amazing boost during the pandemic from people who came back to the hobby. Unfortunately, greed made it so a lot of those people became speculators slash collectors instead of readers and sellers obliged. When they realized they weren't going to get rich, they ditched that biz. So I think there's a very fatal flaw in this argument over here. People came back to comics because that was a form of entertainment they could get during the pandemic. We knew that manga, anime, all this stuff got a huge boost to webtoons, all that. If the material continued to be entertaining, continued to resonate with the readers, surely they'll continue buying it, right? After all, we know that manga continues to sell like gangbusters. Target is like, they only stock manga now. I don't even see them stock graphic novels. But for some reason, Greed, they're blaming it on speculators and collectors. Some are diluting the market so people don't want to buy any more comics. Like, that doesn't work when you take it in light of the fact that manga sales have been up. So, it's not speculators ruining it because it's more a case of people only see value in buying books they like. After all, you won't spend money on something that you do not want to read again and again. So, right. what people do is they go back and buy only back issues. And unfortunately, there are only so many back issues you can collect right. because guess what? The supply of back issues is finite. And once you buy those, you're like, um, well, the modern stuff, nothing in there appeals to me. I'm not going to buy that anymore. So guess what? It's not a collector's issue. It's more of a issue. I'm going to call bullshit on what Tim wrote here for a couple of reasons. There was pencils down. There was a lack of new books coming out around that time. So I'm going to first call bullshit there. He's wrong. 
Um, two, uh, most comic shops were selling back issues and trades and uh, classic runs. Why? Because the material that Marvel and DC are putting out was so bad. Actually, I would also call bullshit again because I really don't think there's been a comic book hit coming out that sold a lot besides uh, a couple of things, maybe three Jokers and then um, the first appearance of Punchline, which, you know, well. was speculators. So it really hasn't been a hit part of a narrative he's trying to frame. The only thing I think of is that maybe during the pandemic, they were really talking about the return of Saga. That was their only attempt. But see, that's also kind of you're talking about back issues, old content in a way too. So um, things that sold out during the pandemic, Invincible, because it's an Amazon TV show. But then again, oh wait, that's old material. That's what I'm saying. Like there really hasn't been a new comic book yet that's generated a lot of revenue and driven people to new comics. And very far and few and in between. And again, why, so why? Why throw out tweets like this that obviously aren't true? Because right now, and we saw this with Gail Simone like last week, a lot of these pros are trying to fashion themselves as the know-it-alls of how the industry should work, although they haven't been practicing what they're preaching. So why would it, people do that right now? Because people are looking for a rebound. Um, I think there's motions happening in the American comic book industry to start licensing out maybe DC Comics and some other people to people like Dynamite, other publishers. I think there will be some sort of restructuring. That doesn't mean it will save itself. That doesn't mean Tim Seeley's going to save the American comic book industry. But it does mean that if he's out here putting out these tweets that, that back the basics of how to sell a comics, make people read comics, give make interiors that people want to read, which is like saying water's wet, fire's hot, very basic things that maybe you will get a job. Because I think some people are starting to hedge their bets that this SJW cesspool of talent is not going to be the people are hiring when they do try to rebound. Many cases of people being hired more to fill us in the checkboxes. We know, for example, every time you need a disabled representation created, you're going to go and hire T. Franklin. You know, it's kind of this weird thing that the industry is doing right now. But we are seeing the tide slowly change. For example, today I sent Shane a little piece of news saying, oh, Victoria's Secret is going back to sexy because apparently yeah. found out that body positivity, pride, and all that stuff does not help them sell bikinis and right. lingerie, surprisingly. So hmm. that might be the reckoning that the comic and book industry needs. They need to go back to the basics. They need to go back to one simple job of comic book, and that is be entertaining. Right. Be entertaining. If you guys will, please go check out Extend Level Up. Over $100,000. You can check it out. Nine Lives Comics or Indiegogo. The link is right down below. I'll leave you guys with a trailer for this smash hit comic, and we will catch you guys again with another video. I dream. I dream of a world carefully crafted, beautifully flawed. This is Accent. In this game of life, there is one thing that determines a victor. A player's ability to grow. A player's ability to evolve. A player's ability to survive. My name is Dog. Choose to play. Choose to upgrade. Choose to level up. Choose to accept.